Hello, everyone, and welcome to Immigration Talk with the Ua Law Group. My name is Ehi Ua, and I'm here with Yai Ua again. Yai, um, if you can say hello to the people. Hello, how are you? Um, I don't think they can respond, Sorry, actually. Uh, but, yeah. Um, hello, how are you? Well, all right. Um, yeah, welcome to Immigration Talk. Uh, we're here weekly to discuss, you know, current trends in immigration law, um, current news, and to answer um, certain questions you might have about immigration. Um, so, yeah, if you would like to do your weekly immigration rundown. Uh, I was wondering if I can do the questions first because I have to... I have to pull up my uh, weekly immigration rundown. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know you said you had a couple of questions that came in this week. Um, what was the first one about? Uh, the first one was dealing with uh, a child who is over 21. He's about early 30s. His name, like I told you, you guys, a couple of weeks ago, I use fake names. I don't use real names because I don't want anybody saying, oh, you spoke about me on your radio show. So let's say his name is, uh, he's a Nigerian-American, so he's a citizen. What was his name? Um, Sean. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and um, he's been here for um, a couple of years. Um He's um, he naturalized, um, so he's now a citizen of this country. So he now wants he wants to petition for his um, his mother to um, to come to this country, um, and um, he wanted to know what is the process and how long it takes. Um, so the uh, basic process is really an I one thirty which is um, used by spouses, you know, uh, parents, I mean, spouses, parents, children, you know, and if you want to petition for your family member. So um, with that said, you know, how do you, you have to prove a relationship with your parent. Um, birth certificate is needed. Um, um, that's probably the most important thing to prove that you, you know, you are, you know, that is your parent. Um, what else? Um, you, you would need your naturalization papers or passport. Um, uh, your, your parent would need his or her passport. Um, you know, you would also need to show that, um, you are able to financially be responsible for them. Um, what else? Um, I mean, there's a long list of other things that you need, uh, but it, it is possible. Um, really, the only thing that can hold a person back from um, petitioning for their parent is um, their income. If you are like... Um, indigent, um, you know, how, if you can't support yourself, how can you support your parent? That's one thing every, you know, people have to consider when they're petitioning for, you know, for parents or spouses or something, or people I in that the, nature. The background huh? on that, the background on that is that the state or the government doesn't want to be responsible for your parent once they get here. So they want to make sure if you're bringing someone here, you're able to take care of them. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, what is the process? Uh, how long is the process? Um, uh, last I checked, it was five months. So the process has taken five months to get approval for your parents. Um, that's, you know, that's basically the run. Yeah, you're, break, up for your you're breaking parents. up. Um, but... Yeah, you're breaking up a little towards the end of that. What were you saying? I said that's basically the rundown of getting an approval for, um, you know, in um, petitioning for your parent. Oh, okay. Okay, and I think you said you had a second question also 
Well, thank you, Sean, for that question. Um, hopefully it helped. And your second question? Um, my second question is actually... Um, What was that? You got mail? No, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> um, my second question is actually a story with a follow-up. Not a story, but a situation that's very serious with a follow-up question. Um, his name is, let's call him Kenny. Uh, he's from He's from a African country, which is true. Uh, his mother petitioned for him uh, a couple of years ago um, while he was in his country. He, he got denied, so the petition was, was not approved. Um, the reason why the petition wasn't approved was they felt that he was he did not have good moral character. Uh, why? He had four criminal activities in his past, including writing a bad check, I believe. So on and so on. So, you know, they would now want him to do it, you know, since he is denied, he has the opportunity to do a motion to reopen or motion to reconsider. Um, so he's choosing to do a motion to reopen. Um, so when a situation like this happens, when people get denied um, because of maybe they, the government doesn't feel like they're a person of good moral character, what can you do? You need to provide evidence that maybe you've turned a a different leaf. You've turned a good leaf. How do you do this? Um, different affidavits um, from people. If you are, if you belong to a church, maybe a affidavit from your pastor. If you belong to a mosque or any religious leader or congreg uh, congregation, people that belong to your church mosque that know you, family members. If you are taking care of if you have children, you know, show that you've turned a good leaf, you're taking care of your child, so on and so on. Um, if you are married, try to get an affidavit from your spouse, family, friends, people from the community. If you're involved in community work, you know, these are the things that you need, you know, to trump the fact that you're not a person of good moral character. And also, if maybe if the person I'm speaking about, the last criminal offense was 2009, which is not, I mean, even though it was kind of close, so his own is harder. So if you are somebody whose criminal offense happened about, you know, um, 10 years ago, show that, okay, in 10 years, you've turned over a good leaf. You have not committed any type of crime uh, like this. Uh, or, Is you the terminology know, turning over a good leaf or turning over a new leaf? Oh, I'm sorry. I, what is the terminology? I'm I not think sure. It's, I believe it's turning over a new leaf. But uh, you okay, well, you just. I mean, yeah, it's the say that you you know you you're trying to be good. You know, you're trying to. You're trying to add some good quality to the community. That's what I'm saying. Whatever you're doing in the community, you should try to get people to advocate for you know for you, so that this would trump the bad things that you've done in the past. So if that doesn't work out, let's say you do put it in, um, and you get denied again. Um, you would then need to take this type of case to the Board of Appeals. Um, and with the Board of Appeals, it, you're just basically, you know, it's, it's just an appeal of that they made a bad decision, and this is why. I always suggest that people hire attorneys for this. The problem this guy Kenny had, he decided to do this himself. 
he decided to do it with his sister. And um, they're not attorneys, and they didn't know what they were doing. And because of that, you know, maybe they wouldn't have been denied um, if they had an attorney that represented them. Um, when you are somebody who who's had a who's had criminal activities in the past is I believe it's I strongly believe it's best to hire an attorney because it's you know when you're trying to petition or you're trying to fight fight a petition that's um, that has been denied uh, an attorney would know the language to use they would know the paperwork to put in uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. they would know what immigration is looking for this guy did not know what immigration was looking for, you know, uh, and, he, you know, he was denied. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say on that situation. Um, but, you know, like I, you know, just to sum everything up, you know, if you want to, if you want to trump whatever um, bad character you have, uh, based on your criminal activities, uh, you need to have a overwhelming good character, you know, affidavits, support, uh, activities, whatever. That's the only way it's going to trump it. So that's that's the gist of um, the question and okay. the scenario. Okay, um, I guess, do you want to give a rundown of the office location and um, phone number and contact information? So, um, this is the Brooklyn location. It's uh, 147 Prince Street uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, 101. Uh, it is that com. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, you're, you're breaking up. Um, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Um, the, my office is 147 Prince Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11201. My email is iuwa l-a-w at gmail dot com. My, my the website is www.uwalaw dot com. The phone number is 347 365 oh, I'm sorry do you have the do you have the phone number with you? No, I'll pull it up though this is a new location and a new number which is why we are um, trying to remember it it's 347-365-3869 uh, um, and that's the Brooklyn office number. Um, the Atlanta office is located at 4350 Georgetown Square, and that's in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, the number is 678-466-7932. And, um, you know, it's always a free phone consultation, and it's $50 for in-office consultation. And that $50 goes towards your retainer fees if you retain us for the case. Correct, EA? Is that the same for the Brooklyn office? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, also in Brooklyn, we are also, um, you can also contact us for our monthly immigration clinics um, that we hold at the last month of the... Um, the last week? last week? I'm sorry, the last week of the month. Okay. Our first one is on, on June 25th. Uh, and you can call us for the location. Uh, it's in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Um, 